Probably there's not a lot of people in this room other than maybe Doc that know what hospice means, uh, unless you've had to go through a, a loss of a family member. Hospice is dealing with people that are terminally ill. And the young lady that's going to talk to us today, <coughs> excuse me, is a, is a community manager for Compassionate Hospice, and um, she's going to tell what she does and how that process works. I'd like to introduce Jacqueline Evans. Please come forward, Jacqueline. Um, so I've got about like 10, 15 minutes to do like educate about hospice, but it actually takes me to do about two hours with the family, you know, at the hospital. So I can just run down like the basics with you guys and not go through criteria and who qualifies. Um, you know, we get a lot of misconceptions that hospice is a place that you take mom or dad to, when actually it's a concept of care and we bring it into a home um, where that patient calls home. So it's assisted living facilities, nursing homes, their personal homes, um, or inpatient even. Um, about 80% of my patients actually live in their own home. This is a government-funded program that Medicare pays 100% for. Um, so they pay for my personnel. I bring in a team of five to help with the family out. It's an RN, an LPN, a social worker, a chaplain, and a CNA. So these um, five people all come into the home, and then I have a medical director that oversees their care, and then the primary physician actually stays the attending, and will oversee their care of the patient too. So you actually have a group of seven, that's your own personal um, doctor's office that we're on call 24 seven. Your team that will care for the patient actually lives in the county that you live in. So if there is an emergency at 3 a.m., they can be at your home hopefully within 45 minutes. Um, we take a place, it's palliative care, not curative care, so it's all comfort. Um, it's p um, pill forms, it's not needles. If it is, um, if we do need IVs, we can't do that. But we take care of um, we wound care, UTIs, um, pneumonia, we take care of those too. What we do is that we put you on service for one diagnosis. So if they have CHF, COPD, and cancer, uh, which you get a lot of that sometimes, we take the most prominent diagnosis and you put on, you're on for that one diagnosis. So if you're on for CHF, that means it's terminally is end stage um, and it, the doctor will say that you have about six months or less if the disease takes its normal route. But that doesn't mean that you have six months and then you're off hospice. What we do is you just keep serving. I have someone on right now for about three years and I think the longest anyone has been on hospice service is about seven years in the United States. Um, but to be quite honest, an average is about three months right now. Um, and I do have people on service that were on for less than 10 minutes. Um, my job is to educate the community to actually ask your doctors about it, to um, get the doctors to actually start mentioning it to families a lot sooner. Because the sooner you get in the, fam um, in the home, the more counseling you can do because it's actually for the family. Um, it's getting them prepared, getting, helping them with their funeral arrangements, any Medicare paperwork that they need. We also do take private insurance. We've taken people that are unable to pay as community services. Um, it's just mostly, most of them at a certain age is Medicare. Um, most of my patients are about, you know, about 60 and older. I think the oldest I have is about 105. And the youngest I've ever taken is about, was about 26 with cervical cancer. So they range from anywhere. Um, the younger that you go, there's special hosp um, hospices for younger children. But so we usually kind of just take them on case by case. Um, there's also different levels of care that you get with hospice that's all covered. Routine home care is what they normally get which um, that team of five, we make a care plan and they tell you how many times a week everyone comes into the home and we'll be contacting them. It can be anywhere from a nurse from two to three times to almost every day. Um, the CNA is usually about three times um, a week unless um, the family requests more. Um, you know, everyone likes a bath. <laughs> so, um, but then um, if it does become a crisis, there is inpatient. Inpatient is a facility where you have around the clock nursing um, 
but what my hospice, we promote is continuous care. Because we've noticed that if you take the person out of their bed and the place that they're most comfortable with, and you take them to a facility, they get depressed and they decline a lot faster. So I bring in CC, it's called Continuous Care, Crisis Care. And that's where I have someone by their bed, a nurse um, by their bed for 24 hours at eight hour intervals. And then after 24 hours, if they're still in crisis, we just keep them on CC. Um, and then I also have respite care. Respite care is when the family has a breakdown because it's a lot to take care of someone that's actually terminally ill. Um, so if they have a breakdown, they're coming overwhelmed and they need a little bit of a break. I hate using that word, but a little bit of a break from mom and dad. I can take them the inpatient for up to five days and give that family a break. So mostly this is for the families, just um, making sure that they're all comfortable with um, spiritual, social, um, you know, medically, and um, all that good stuff. Um, you can go on service for anywhere from dementia, cancer, COPD, CHF, but like I said, I won't get into all the criteria, because that can take us a, a long time. <laughs> um, is there any questions? Do you guys need to know anything else? Could you explain to them the benefit of having in home hospice care and not having to activate 9 They would find that interesting. Yeah, the benefits of that is because the hospice, we were coming into the home. When you're terminally ill, you're going to the hospital, there's, there's no um, benefits of calling 911 and going to the hospital with mom and dad if they are terminally ill. Um, now, if they did fall in the home and they broke a hip, would we, we always encourage that you call us first, you know, because you are on hospice and it takes a part of Medicare Part A. Um, if they do fall and break a hip, we follow them to the hospital, you revoke all hospice service, so Medicare pays for that service, and then you can come back on. But the benefit is, um, at a certain point in someone's life, when they are terminally ill, the needles and all poking and prying and taking them to the ER um, in an ambulance ride is just exerting them. It's not doing any benefit when we can actually come to them and actually take care of them in their home um, and help them in their crisis. A lot of families do like to call 911, um, which is very common. I think if, you know, if I was in a situation and I wasn't familiar with hospice, I think if my mom was in a crisis, I think I'd be calling 911 too, to be honest with you. Um, but knowing that actually I have someone that's third, can be here in 35 minutes or less, it's a lot easier for some of these families. Um, you know, 130 pounds of dead weight is a lot to get someone to a car to the hospital and everything like that. But if there's a need for a hospital visit, we, we um, encourage it to. We, we don't restrict them from doing anything. Um, it's not like home health. Home health, you do have to be homebound. Hospice, we let you do whatever you want. Um, eat whatever you want. <laughs> We're not going to tell you if you're diabetic, you can't have your sugar. I have COPD patients that still want their cigarettes, you know, but they've managed to do it, you know, without blowing themselves up. So, I mean, <laughs> um, so we just don't restrict them. They, they can go anywhere they want if they're able to. Um, it's just, a, you know, a lot of doctors I have like to refer to um, home health, but home health is rehabbing you. And if there comes to a certain point where you're not rehabbing, Having home health, a nurse in there once every two weeks is not really benefiting them when I can actually have a nurse in there three to four times a week um, with the, the rest of the team attached to them.